Criminal attackers often use verbal distractions to put themselves in a place to victimize you. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from White House, Tennessee in the United States. KMS Squared makes the ultimate lighting for your reloading press. Their innovative design increases safety and makes your reloading more efficient. Please thank them for sponsoring today's video. So you're gonna see our victim here coming in with his car, pulling into his house. He has just left, this was back in the summertime, has left to go to the convenience store, buy a pack of cigarettes and a lottery ticket. And the car behind him has been following him around for quite some time. Go read the news story that I've linked in the description. And they, the police said that this car was following him around town. They got him on several surveillance videos following our intended victim. So he has parked his car in front of his driveway. It's a 60 something year old man who again is just an innocent dude who went to the liquor store to go get a pack of smokes and a lottery ticket. So now the two guys that have been tailing him in this car are going to pull over and, and you can see how much time this is taking. Now then you're going to see finally they're going to get out of the car when they see him get out of his car and as we zoom in they actually use a ruse and they ask him for directions to Nashville. So they're like, hey man, how do I get to Nashville from here? And our intended victim here is going to come over to them. You can totally tell from his gait here that he is elderly, that he's not very ambulatory. I mean, he's okay, but having trouble. And he's gonna you know, talk to them about, oh, you gotta go this way, you gotta go that way or whatever. And they're gonna use that ruse here now to jump him in just a second. And as he's trying to give them good directions in which way to go, they're setting up the right time. Finally, they go over and grab a hold of him. The guy on the left, you can see his hand back, actually points a pistol at him. They're gonna grab his wallet and I think his watch and then jump in the car and run off. Thankfully, he wasn't hurt. Tons of lessons out of this one. That's where it ends. Man, scary stuff out of this one. And thankfully, the uh, homeowner was not injured in this one. I got a question for you out of this one. I want you to answer it in the comments. Do you sit in your car when you get home or do you bounce out of there and get in the house? I just want you to think about that. I tend to get out quickly and go back in the house, but I don't do it universally and videos like this are gonna make me do it more often. Personally, I think the single biggest lesson to learn out of this video is to pay attention to your surroundings and that is especially true when you are driving your car. Most people I have found, they get in their car, they pay attention to what is directly in front of them, maybe over to the side, but always in front of them. And the only reason they really look in the rear view mirror is if they're backing up or if somebody honks at them or something like that. Instead, friends, I want you to pay attention because from a defensive position, from understanding your self-defense, you have to say, wait a minute, is anybody following me? That's not being paranoid, that's being aware and paying attention in your world. This guy had been followed all around town by these guys. He followed them for quite some way around several turns. So you see somebody that follows you multiple turns and into your neighborhood, maybe something that you wanna pay attention to. Not the least of which when they back up like this, you see them kind of pull forward and then back up and come back. If this guy had known that they had followed him through multiple turns, then he would definitely have been on alert. Something would have been wrong. He would have been in condition orange instead of in condition yellow or even condition white. And this might not have happened. So the single biggest lesson out of here, pay attention when you're driving your car, particularly in your rear view mirror. If someone is following you, do not ignore that. Do something about it. Now then, he gets out of his car finally. They get out of their car when he does. He had been sitting in his car for 30 seconds. So from the time he pulled in and stopped, he waited a full 30 seconds to get out of the car and head into his house. One of the ways that perpetrators victimize victims is they wait until you know they've been in the car for quite some time, 30, 40, 50 seconds of just sitting in the car. Don't do that, friends. When you get done with your car, when you park the car, put it in park, grab your things very quickly, and get out and get into a place of safety. Don't sit and linger in your car. Remember when it stopped, it's a transitional space. Next thing that we see here is a ruse. And, and when we talk about, you know, what Craig Douglas talks about in managing unknown context, can't recommend enough that you go take Craig's classes, that he talks about managing unknown context. It's maintaining personal space. These guys are unknown. I don't know if they're, they have bad intent or whatever, and they seem to be asking questions, whatever. But if he had managed an unknown contact here, maintained his space, hey man, that's close enough. I'm sorry I don't have anything for you. Even if you're like me and you're super friendly and you say, yeah man, you wanna go over here, whatever. Doing so from the center of the driveway, hey, can I help you? That's close enough, help me out here, would have been the better idea. Because once the attack starts, you see it's two on one here. They grab a hold of this man. 
who in his 60s, I'm not going to blame him for not having significant empty-handed skills. And, and even if he's armed here, the fact that they got the jump on him and were able to get a hold of him, if he's got a gun on him, unless he had had it in hand already, it wasn't going to be very helpful for him in this instance. And so this isn't an instance where that's really going to be the help. Probably a much better instance instead to just get away and, and stay away from these guys and prevent the problem to begin with. Now again, you see the guy on the left actually has a gun pulled on him here. And if you go read the news story linked in the description, it says at one point the victim said they actually got his hand on the gun, but the gun did not go off, thankfully. And uh, it didn't, you know, the guy chose not to use it on him. If you're going to try to disarm a bad guy who pulls a gun on you, you better have a significant empty-handed skill set. Thankfully, in this case, it was used in an intimidation tool and our bad guy wasn't a murderer and it didn't end up in a negative outcome. However, I can't always promise that. So again, compliance is an option. And if you do not have a robust empty-handed skill set and some practice doing it on the mats, I wouldn't recommend that you try to take a gun away from a bad guy. Thankfully, these guys aren't murderers, they're just uh, thieves, and so they run off with our victim's stuff, and he is able to get away. But let's definitely learn the lessons here about paying attention, about managing our space, about getting out of our car quickly and not lingering there, and about maintaining and managing those unknown contacts by maintaining our distance and our reactionary gaps to cover our ASP.